Hey, coaches, welcome back to Football Talk with Coach Chip. Just got back recently from the Glacier Clinic in Atlanta. They call it Atlanta. It's actually Marietta. And it was a good time. Uh, coaching staff went up there. We saw a lot of good speakers, had a lot of good fellowship with each other, met some guys that I uh, had talked to on the Internet and uh, even talked to by phone some. And uh, we were sitting around, as one is prone to do, at a coach's clinic doing football talk with Coach Chip (laughs) because I was there. And we were just uh, talking to a young guy that was a youth league coach that came that was a great program to uh, give scholarships to these youth league guys. You know, guys aren't professional coaches. He was one of the ones I'd met through football talk with Coach Chip and social media and all that. And we were talking blocking schemes, and I said, we often overthink it. I said, these kids didn't know who to block. And I said, I'll tell you a great rule. Uh, you can use Gap Down Backer, of course, and the Gap Down Backer book is available. And that's the that's a good thing. I said, if you don't want to do that, another surefire way is use the L. And the blocking rule is called Head Up Inside. And I had forgotten the L part. It's been so long since we used Head Up Inside because of us using so much gap down backer over the years. But way back in high school, we used the blocking rule. Head up inside. Block whatever's head up you. If nothing's head up you, block what's inside of you. And you can do that like a gap down backer, or you can do it more like the A-gap power teams do it. And you can double team that guy inside of you. And there's just all kind of ways of doing it. But a, a, a fine young offensive line coach from Massachusetts, Matt Lesh, he said, yeah, the L. And I went, dang, man. I said, it's been so long, I forgot the L. We used to use that back in the 80s when we say the blocking rules head up inside. You simply make an L. Stick it, like in this case, the left side will stick their left arm out in front of them, stick their right arm out beside them toward the, the next lineman to their right, and make an L. And you block whatever's in it. Let's look. I'll show you what I'm talking about. But first, here's what's available free from Football Talk with Coach Trip Chip subscribers. To the channel. All these things, I'm not going to go through them. You got a pause button, but if you want any of these, I just recently, I think because of my recent appearance on uh, Kenny Simpson and Daniel Chamberlain's podcast, uh, Football 101, or Coaching Football 101, I can't remember right now, but it's Football 101 with Kenny Simpson and Daniel Chamberlain, you'll find it. And I got a lot of emails uh, from new, new guys saying, hey, coach, I want this, I want that. And some guys wanted everything to do with whatever, and some just said, give me whatever's on that list. And I gladly did it, and I found out you can put a whole lot of attachments on a Gmail and got them sent out. But you can contact me at Siegel.chip at gmail.com or at Coach Chip on Twitter slash X. Of course, be sure to like and share the channel. Like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, It doesn't cost anything. Don't be afraid of commitment. Don't be that dude. Our quick passing game is available right now. I don't think it was on that list. It's a, it's very thick. I forget how many pages it is. It shows you how to install it. It shows you how to use it. Uh, it's a great addition to any offense. I don't care what you do. As long as you're not running too tight, full house backfield, the quick game is good. It's kind of hard to run quick game with too tight in the full house backfield. But then again, I've been wrong before. So be sure to subscribe and to share the channel and ask me, at Siegel.chip at gmail.com about the quick passing game. All right, now let's talk about what the L, block what is in your L. We call it head up inside. Look, if you got a a tight end here, he's going to hold that left arm up out in front of him straight ahead. And then he's going to put that right arm out to the right. And look, all you got to do is teach the kids that. If it's in the L, you block it. That's head up inside. And you do that completely across the board. You can do it with power. You can do it, I guess you can do it with counter. Now, if you're wanting to kick that D in, you may have to have an exception for your tight end. If that defensive end is head up the tight end or just inside shoulder in a seven tech right here, you may want to have an exception. So you can have a full back or an H back kick that dude out. And I'll have some more diagrams up in a little bit. 
but that's totally up to you. We did it even on, uh, all we had to know is, is it coming inside of me or is it coming outside of me? The blocking rule was head up inside. So if we were running toss, this is going back to the 70s now. If we were running, this was our rule on almost everything. If the ball was going outside of me, I would reach the guy head up me. If the ball was going inside of me, I would dig out that guy head up of me. And if there was nobody head up of me, I'd block down. So we called it head up inside. That was the rule the coach uh, used. And as I got older, I kind of thought it was elementary, and it is. But you go back and look at it, you can draw it up with most plays, and it's going to work. Now, you're going to have exceptions. Like I said, if you want to run a true power, you're probably going to need to um, have an exception for your uh, tight end. But then again, you may want to run power wide and uh, or let the back read where it opens up let that tight end block down on that seven technique and let the kicker go kick that outside backer. And that's doable too. And that would work really well against a five, two, three, four. Uh, I think this blocking rule is really good against a tight front that everybody's talking about. And all it is is an odd front from the 1960s and seventies that people are going back to using now and they can give it another name so they can act like they invented it. So here's what you do. You got to put your hand up, your arm out, arm out, left arm in front, right arm right here, and you tell them whatever's in there, that's what you block. First thing in there. You say, what about if they got a head up guy and they walk guy up in this gap? All right, now you're talking about exceptions to the rule. Now, here's what I would do. I would tell them, I said, I know head up is first in the rule, and this goes against my progression uh, philosophy that first thing is what you block, but you got to get first threat. And first threat be whatever's walked up in that gap inside of you. First threat, and then you would kick with a puller or kick with a running back. And you don't have to have pullers on this, especially if, you know, if you're running, if you're a youth football team and you just want your kids to know who to block every snap. And if they don't block him, then you've got a conversation to have easily with them. Say, okay, Billy, why did you block this guy? And he tells you, use that Socratic method, ask questions, let him tell you. And you say, okay, was there a guy head up you? Yes, sir. Well, that's who you block, Billy. Whatever, and you just over and over again through repetition, which is the key to offensive line play, they will learn they're going to block whatever's in that L. Like I said, they can come up and fill up the gaps and all that kind of stuff, and you need to do what I call a gap call, which means everybody block what's in their gap to the backside. You just drive it down. All right, now I've, I've inserted the defense. It's just a even front with a three and a, and a one. And I got an odd front coming for those of you that that prefer that. And you can see there's – all right, so his rule is head up inside. If you're going to stick to the rule, he's got that DN. The tackle's rule is head up inside. Block what's in the L. Well, what's in the L? Nothing. So he's going to block down. Now, if you want to, if you, want to you turn this into a double team and you combo up to the mic. That's what you do. If you don't think you can teach your kids – and we're talking youth ball now – if you don't think your kids to, uh, can do that, you can double team him, not worry about the mic, let the mic make a play with all these people coming at him, or you can just do it like a gap down backer. He can just look at the guard and say, hey, that's me. And he blocks down like gap down backer, and then he blocks down because his buddy told him, I got him. Because head up, inside. Nothing's in here, inside. And then this guy, he gets said, hey, that's me. He can block down here. All right, the center's got the L. His rule is head up backside. Nothing head up, block first thing backside, right there. And I intentionally left these guys out. They'll be in some later diagrams because we're going to show you something like how you could do power this way. So block what is in your L. This is a power. Now what we're saying here is we're going to stick to the rule. So head up inside by the tight end. He's got that seven tech defensive end. Seven techs inside shoulder of the of the tight end. And the kicker doesn't have to be lined up here in a sniffer. He could be back here. You could be in a tee. You could be in a bone. It could be the full back. He's going to kick the first thing outside. That's his rule. I'm going to kick the first thing outside. He could be here. He could be back here. He could be here in the middle. Or you can do split backs. He could be right here. Boom. Whoever your kicker is. If you're going to pull a lineman and block it like a GT, the guard's going to pull kick the first thing outside. And then the tackle, of course, will wrap. You better have somebody to get that defensive end on the backside. Now, this one here, 
You see, I got them double teaming and then comboing to here. And the way I like the block power, wrapping to the back side. All right, you don't have to do it that way. Like I said, you can call me, let the tackle say, hey, that's me. It's real simple. I think it's so simple a 10-year-old can do it. And he'll block down on the three. And then because he got the me call from his buddy, he'll block down. It's just that simple. So he blocks down just like gap down backer. But it guarantees they know the rule. And you can kind of marry this with gap down backer if you don't want to sell out the gap down backer completely. You can say, okay, we're going to block what's head up us. If nothing's head up us. Then it becomes gap down backer. Does that make sense? So head up, gap down backer is what your rule would be. Man, gap down backer. And it, it, and it works. It, it does work. And if you're in a situation like this, you get a me call. And it also helps with these youth league teams, uh, these Buddy Ryan wannabes that walk everybody up and blitz. And let me tell you, nobody's learning football in a league that allows that. Nobody's learning football. And Because and, last time I checked, youth football was about development. If you, all you want to do is just win that ball game and by doing something like just walking guys up and just blitzing just because you got a linebacker that's quicker than a guard, that's good. You're going to win. But what are you teaching that linebacker about playing linebacker? Blitzing is the last thing you need to teach a linebacker because it's the easiest thing to do. Teach them how to shed blocks. Teach them how to read keys. As Joe Daniel says, teach them ask. You know, alignment, stance, key. I forget what the other A is. But you got to teach them how to play football, guys. You know, there's, and I told one of the coaches there, and we were sitting around jotting things down on napkins at the hotel bar. I told him, I said, listen here, two prime objectives for anybody to me, this is me, that's sub-varsity level. Teach them how to play the game and teach them to love the game. And success is measured by going to the games the next year when they move up a level, are they still there? Every kid that moves up a level, that's a notch in your belt. And here's the same play again. I got rid of the tight end. Because now if you split that tight end out, outside backers got to go with him, and you can still run your power right here. You got to ask yourself, does a tight end add to things? Teams that like seven techniques can screw you up when you use tight ends. I'm not saying don't use them. But you got to ask yourself, if I detach that tight end, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten yards, split him out, am I taking somebody with him that I don't have to block anymore? That's the question. And that's what I've done here. But see, you got the power, and you block and gap down backer. And this is where you tell the tackle, if he's on your outside shoulder, don't block him. Block down. But it's just gap down backer. Block your L. What is in your L? This is it. Like, this is old-fashioned 6-2, which I've been to some rec league games, youth league games recently. My granddaughter is a cheerleader down in the Dothan area, and I've watched several games over the last two or three years, and they still do this stuff. And there's nothing wrong with it. This is a good defense especially good youth defense, good sub-varsity defense. The old-fashioned 6-2, wide tackle 6, whatever you want to call it. This is what gap down – this is what gap down – excuse me. This is what head up inside does for you. Head up, he's got him. Head up, he's got him. Head up, he's got him. Ah, the center's rule, uncovered. First linebacker backside. First linebacker backside. If he's totally uncovered. And then you got – Head up inside, head up inside, head up inside. Notice we got everybody blocked. So, Coach, we didn't block him. Well, I hope to goodness you've got a lead blocker. We're not talking two tight in and one back. So, whether you're in the eye, the bone, the power bone, as I like to call it, the full house T, you've got extra blockers. And you're going to lead on that cat right there. And all you can ask for is a hat on a hat when you're playing against this kind of defense. Now, here it is again. Head up inside versus a 5-3. And y'all know, if you've been watching me on Football Talk with Coach Chip, I'm going to check everything against a 3-3 or a 5-3. It doesn't matter. Look, head up, head, head up inside, head up inside, head up, nothing head up, inside. And this is where you got to you rip it up. Do it like you want to. You can just have him come through here, ripping that outside shoulder, that play side shoulder of the nose, helping your center get him. Again, you don't – and then he gets the mic. And if you don't think you can combo a lick, just tell the center he's got him. But I would have the, the guard help the center. Just rip through right there. Tell that center he's got to reach that dude. 
and not let him go to the left if the play's to the left, not let him go to the right if the play's to the right. Tell your guard to rip through and climb to that mic backer right there. And notice, look, head up, boom, head up, boom, head up, boom. So he's got nothing head up him, tell him he's got backside backer, depending on who you're playing. You know, if you can block the 6-2 and the 5-3 at the youth level, you can block pretty much anything they put out there. Now, again, I'll go back to this. Most youth leagues, if they don't do it, they need to have rules about how many guys can be on the line of scrimmage on the defense. Or all you're doing then is playing tackle the man with the football. Because they know you can't throw the ball to keep them honest in most youth leagues. I'm not talking about travel youth football, where they're recruiting the best players in an area and then traveling all around the place playing games on the weekends. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about just good old-fashioned youth football, playing the kids in your community. Most teams aren't going to – and even you got a quarterback that can spin it, do you have a line that can block for him? I've seen a lot of good youth quarterbacks that couldn't throw because they didn't have time to throw. Same thing with kickers. I've seen middle school teams with kickers, and they don't have a snapper and a holder at that level. But some kid's been going to kicking class or kicking camps since he was – eight or nine, and you can't kick it. You can't kick extra points because you can't uh, snap it and hold it. Same thing goes for passing the football at the younger levels. You know, let's just be honest. But if you got a run game and your line knows who they're going to block, you're money ahead. All right. So hit me up if you have any questions about head up inside and blocking the L. Don't forget our books available for only $30 each. All three of them, they're, they're slam full of information. Uh, this is nothing but bucks, all the ways to run buck, all, all the different formations you can run buck, how to block buck, how to install buck. And some of y'all right now say, what is buck? And you may not heard it because they don't talk about it on TV. It's basically pin and pull. Not exactly, but basically. The offensive line manual for gap scheme blocking is great for youth league, any sub-varsity team. And even, like I said, the 49ers who just went to the Super Bowl, they run gap down backer. Not every play, but they run gap down backer. They run the gap scheme. And then, of course, the playbook, which is a glimpse of some of what we've done over the years, some of the things that helped us win a couple of state championships. And you can contact me at Siegel.chip at gmail.com to order your copies of these. If you get all three of them, $60. That comes down to $20 a piece. You can't beat it. All right. So, what the L? Head up inside. Block what's in your L. All right, until next time, y'all be elite.